guys, welcome back to Pam's Crafty Corner. I'm Pam, hope everyone is doing well. It has been a really long time since I have recorded a floss tube video uh, showing off any of my crafty things. I took a little bit of a break from the summer. So if you're back, thank you for sticking with me and for coming back to my channel to see my update. If you're new to this channel, uh, this channel is mostly about my crafts, uh, cross stitch, knitting, crochet, uh, paper crafting, a um, little bit of hand sewing, um, like English paper piecing. And I also do bi-weekly episodes called Coffee, Crime, and Crafts, which basically is just me working on a craft project that I'm focusing for that week while I talk about a um, true crime story. So, lots going on. Where to start? Uh, it was a great summer, despite my back issues, um, which I think we may have... Uh, finally figured out um, when I last did an update video I was having some issues with my SI joint and I have since been going to physiotherapy a couple times a week I've had x-rays done on my lumbar and my pelvis and the results came back from that just uh, like a week and a half ago and it looks like I have degenerative disc disease in my lower spine, like in my lumbar, and I also have osteoarthritis, uh, it would appear in my pelvis, like in the SI joint and in the lower spine as well. So, that being said, I'm still going to physio. I have an appointment booked with my doctor to review the results from my x-rays and come up with some kind of plan going forward. I think we're also going to x-ray my neck and my shoulder um, to see if the issues I have going on there are also um, disc degeneration. Because everybody gets disc degeneration, it happens. But uh, mine seems to be to the point that it's a lot I've got worse degeneration than you would expect to see at my age and um, arthritis in there as well so I don't, I don't even know the full ramifications of that yet because like I say I haven't really had a sit-down conversation with my doctor yet so we'll see um, what goes on with that when I see her at the end of the month uh, what else went on uh, I had my 25th wedding anniversary on the 24th of August, our silver wedding anniversary. Um, I can't believe we've been married 25 years, but yeah, I haven't, um, haven't killed him yet and it's still going good. He gave me a lovely present. Um, he gave me this lovely um, Tanzanite necklace on silver, set in silver. Um, I have a thing for tanzanite. He's after giving me other pieces of tanzanite over the years. Um, I've got a couple of rings, uh, some earrings, those sorts of things. So this was very lovely. And we had a little bit of a celebration for that with some family, um, cake, champagne, the whole nine yards, had a great night, really enjoyed ourselves. Um, and what else did I do this summer? I refinished my floors. I will put in, that's part of my whole crafting thing. I did a bit of DIY. I, I wanted to refinish my cabinets this summer in the kitchen, but with my back the way it was, I decided not to tackle that. Then in August, I started a round of vacation time and I decided to refinish our floors. So in our living room, and hallway, like the main section of the house, we have old oak parquet flooring. And I'll insert some video or pictures of what I'm talking about. 
while I'm discussing it. I decided that I was sick of the parquet. I didn't want to really rip it up. I mean, it is proper hardwood. It's um, so you can sand it and refinish it, that sort of thing. Rather than just refinishing it though, I got it in my head that I would like to change the color of it. Not necessarily the entire floor, but do some sort of pattern in it. So I hand sanded um, the floor in blocks and I used a Poly Shades product to um, turn half of the blocks espresso. And then I, so there was two coats of espresso done on all of the floor after I had it taped. And then once it was all taped off and the poly shades was done and dry, I pulled up all of the tape and I covered the entire floor in three coats of floor grade um, high gloss polyurethane. I'm really happy with it. It looks great, but it took me um, over a month to do. Because of my back, I could only spend a certain amount of time on the floor um, each time that I was working. So I had to do it in little bits and pieces. And um, But I'm really happy it's done now. I'm very pleased with it. And I will not be tackling anything with this floor again anytime soon. The only thing I have left to do are the stairs that go down um, to our entryway and down to our uh, lower level. I am gonna do those and just refinish them and I'm gonna do the handrails dark, um, do the stairs light, but the backsplash of the steps, like the backing on the steps, I'm gonna do those dark. And I'll do that probably this week or next week. That shouldn't take me long. That's a simple, easy job. This floor took a lot longer. So that was, that's, my life update, I guess. And now we're like seven minutes in and I haven't even started talking about my crafts yet. Okay, so let's get started. Although I guess the floor refinishing maybe is a craft because it's a bit of DIY. I don't know. Um, cross stitch. I've been working a lot on just a few pieces during the summer. Before I got at the floor, I was concentrating on a full coverage piece. It's a, a piece that is retired. It's no longer available. It's put out by Mystic Stitch, and it's called Elvis Presley Roustabout. And I got quite a bit done early in the summer on him. So I worked my way across all the way to the end of the piece that's so that's the two corners this is super wrinkly because I literally just took it out of the Q snap it was all bunched up and I managed to do his face his ear got one eye done and working across his forehead to the other eye and now what I've decided to do is go back up to this section over here and I'm starting to bring this down and so it's all monochromatic, um, but there are a lot of color changes, a lot of color changes. So this is a old fashioned paper chart. Um, I've lost one of the pages from it. And because to make it easier to work on, I've, I've cut the sheets, um, which is making it go a lot faster because I can just concentrate on one little section and I have my Q-snap and the little piece folded up there on the side. I can cross it off as I'm working on it. And um, I'm working on this cross country. I did park these threads here, but they'll all be worked in now the next time I pick this one up. And I am looking forward to getting back to this one. Um, it is the full coverage piece that I'm concentrating on this year and will continue into next year. Because I would like to get that one finished. Okay, next one um, I worked on is 
Winchester Mystery Mansion. Um, Allie from Allie's Stitching Studio also sent me this chart. And this is how much I've gotten done on that. Started working in the center of the chart. I'm working my way out. Lots of lots of color changes. So Winchester Mystery Mansion is a piece designed by Debbie Patrick. It is an older chart. There are blends. There is a ton of back stitching. Um, once I get this section done in the middle, I'm going to back stitch what I can of it before moving on. But this is what I've gotten done so far. Super detailed chart, lots of color changes. Okay, that's also in a project bag that Allie made and sent to me and quilted. How gorgeous is that? I just love it. Really, really well done, Allie. Okay, then I have been working. The only other cross stitch really that I have been working on steadily uh, for the month of September, I decided to do Sampler September, and I pulled out my deck by Cross Stitch. And it's funny enough, because this piece is, like I bought a PDF chart, but originally I had been working like from the actual paper copy of the chart itself. This is what it looks like. And because it was a paper copy of the chart, I knew the dimensions of it. Like it's 363 stitches wide by 447 stitches tall. So I knew it was a big piece and I'm stitching it one over one on 25 count fabric. So it's deceiving when you look at it. But the other day, Allie asked me, how many stitches are in that piece? Because as you can tell, there is negative space in here, so you can't just multiply the width times the height like you would with a full coverage chart and get the number of stitches because, of course, of the negative space. I have this as a digital copy. This is just what I printed from that. So the last few months, I've been working on this in Pattern Keeper. So I actually opened it up and took note of how many stitches are in it. There's over 81,000 stitches in this piece, which I don't know how I didn't realize that before. So I have now finished over 60 some thousand of them. I'm down to, um, I'm down to 1300, no, sorry, 13,000 stitches left to do. And I've been working on this steadily in the month of September when I wasn't finishing the floor. And this is what it looks like. I still have it in the hoop because I am working on this today. Uh, again, I'm stitching it on antique white uh, 25 count fabric and it's in DMC 939, which is a very, very dark navy blue. And this is what I've done. I'm down here, not quite at the bottom, but almost. So in the month of September, I have done all of this across here. And now I'm concentrating on this section in the center to join up with this side. I'm absolutely adoring it. It is super detailed. Um, but I'm loving it, really, really enjoying it. There is a partial row of pages down here underneath, so I really don't have a lot left to do. Um, when you consider there's 81,000 stitches and I only have 13,000 left to go, <laughs> I suspect I might be able to finish it by the end of the year. At the beginning of September, I put up a ludicrous post on my Instagram saying, 
hey, it's Sampler September. I'm gonna concentrate on this project. And if I get 850 stitches done a day, I can have it done by the end of September. There's no way I was gonna do 850 stitches a day. I, life, right? I, I work full time. I have a family. I'm doing crazy refinishing work in my house. So this will not be finished by the end of September, but I did get a huge, huge chunk done. Like several thousand stitches did get done. So this will be a finish by the end of the year, I'm sure. So that's it for my whips uh, that I would have worked on since you saw me last. No, it isn't. I have a finish as well. Uh, let me just grab that. Okay, actually I lied. One more whip and a finish. So this is Arsenic and Old Lace um, by The Little Stitcher. I absolutely love that movie. I think it's hilarious. And I did work on this and I finished everything pretty much in the top section of this chart, um, including the back stitching for the most part, um, little spider webs, the candles. So I have now moved down and I'm starting the bottom portion and I got a little bit of that done. So I will be picking this up on the, um, in October now, and hopefully we'll get this finished in the month of October for um, Dark 13 stitching and Dark October, whatever you wanna call that. So that's my last whip that I've worked on since you saw me last. And this is my finished. I did the chart uh, dog lessons for people. I picked it up, um, as many of you know, I lost my uh, little stitchy companion who would usually be behind me on the sofa here. Um, I lost her, it was a year ago in July. So um, I started this Lizzie Kate piece, which I'm gonna frame and put up um, with her picture and her paw print that I have downstairs. And I had finished it. I did a lot of color substitutions on this chart. Um, to start off with the fabric that I worked on is a 28 count um, Monaco, I think this is. I think it was a 28 count Monaco. But what I did was I coffee dyed it and threw it in the oven to get this kind of modeled effect on it. And for the flosses, I substituted, this I think was supposed to be like this real in your face blue, like this kind of color that the water is at the water dish. So I changed it for some pinks. Um, I changed out that heart to a pink. I changed the stripes in the house to the same pink. It's a, it's a variegated thread. Um, the same thing, the green, which is like a grassy olivey green. I used a, a green that I had in my stash that was variegated. The water bowl and the fire hydrant were almost a Christmassy red, which I didn't really like the look of. So I switched it to this, um, I don't know, more like a barn red, I guess. It's a deeper, darker red. The dog in the pattern in the chart, I think was white with brown spots and I changed it to be a brown dog with brown spots because my Maggie was brown and black. So I made the spots really dark, the ears dark, put a little pink collar on her. And that's pretty much it. I think these large letters, I used a, 
over dyed floss for which wasn't called for but close to and the letters just the rest of the text I used a DMC so there you go this dog lessons for people so this needs to be ironed and framed which I'm hoping to do soon but um, I've just been so busy that I have I now have three pieces four pieces downstairs that need to be framed and that's not including my monopoly board which I will talk about now my monopoly board which I did years ago and I'll insert some video or pictures uh, here as I'm talking about it I'm finally getting around to doing that project with the coffee table the top was cut out of the table I decided to paint it um, the tabletop is going to be um, white around the outside I've painted the the legs and the front of it this real vibrant red that matches the red in the in the Monopoly board um, I'm going to stretch and mount the Monopoly board uh, cross stitch on a large piece of foam core board and then that's going to be set in underneath a plexiglass um, that's going on top of the table. And then around the edge where the plexiglass butts up against the edge of the table, I'm gonna put um, a piece of decorative frame type molding that I'm also gonna have painted red. So that table has now been painted and the Cross stitch has been uh, washed and pressed, ironed. It's all ready to go. I just, I also have a piece of plexiglass to go on the tabletop. All I need now is the piece of decorative molding and the uh, foam board large enough. So that means a trip to Michael's maybe this week or next week to get that done and a trip to the hardware store for the uh, wood that I'm going to use for the frame on top and Bob's your uncle hopefully I can get that put together and finished in the next couple of weeks and I'll be able to show you that finished table in my next video fingers crossed so that's it for the cross stitch I have done no knitting I don't think I've done any crochet in um, the last month and a half or so I literally haven't touched that stuff. Again, just too busy. Thanks to the lovely Allie in Australia who got hardcore into the junk journaling recently. She kind of spurred me on to pick up some of my paper crafting as well. I've got so much stuff from when I was a very, very avid scrapbooker, card maker, um, that I decided to use some of it. Um, I love to journal. I do journal all the time. I've shown several of my journals on here. This was a bullet journal that I had picked up a year or so ago that I had started using as a bullet journal, you know, with your um, calendars and um, lists. Um, what else did I put in here? I don't know some journaling prompts, um, days of the week, um, those sorts of things. Anyway, so I got out my paper crafts and I have started to just decorate the pages in here. So you can see it's getting quite chunky now, which I really love. And I've just started um, I'm just going to quickly show you these because I've already written on a bunch of the pages. Got some pockets and stamps done. I did a couple of pages for our anniversary. So I'm just decorating the edges of the pages. Oh, this one I absolutely love. So this is what I've done for my reading list. I had these pockets. I put coffee rings on them with uh, a mug. I had some of these um, journal cards, which were done up like old library cards. So I just have to 
from my Goodreads, I'm just going to copy my uh, reading list and add that in there. I've also done some um, fold out journal spaces for the other side for my reading list this year. I've done some more pages like this where I've got journal cards made and stuck in, plus I can journal on the actual um, page behind. Again, just simple. I've been decorating using up some of my supplies and just making, you know, some note cards using my stamps with my inks. Same sort of thing here, leaving lots of space for journaling on each of the pages. So yeah, so I've just, I've taken to um, decorating my journal a little bit, just to, you know, spice it up and give me something more interesting to look at. It gets me, it's the creative juices flowing. I like pulling out the pieces and working with my um, supplies that I already have on hand. And in addition to that, I've also, um, as I said, I copied, I copy dyed some paper to put on the background that I have out of old books. Um, these are not any great, you know, wondrous novels. My sister-in-law, um, she used to read these like I don't know. They're not books that I would read. They're like um, feel good. Um, almost romancy, but not romance. Like anyway, they're just not my, just not my thing. I had one of those books downstairs. The pages were old. It was an old book. Um, just a cheap book that you could have picked up a dime a dozen at any store. I ripped the pages out and, and coffee and tea dyed some of them. So in doing that, while I was stitching one day, oh, <laughs> I coffee and tea dyed a whole pile of stuff. I've done envelopes that I can turn into pockets inside my journal. I've done, um, let me just see. I've done some old pieces of a larger envelope. I had some um, sheet music that I tore and copy dyed that as well. More envelopes, some journal sized note paper, copy and tea dyed that. So it's still writable. Like I can still write on this. I can fold it, put it in my book as a journal piece, um, tear it up, add it in. And then I took some decorative um, 12 by 12 paper that I had that had been pieces left and I did the same thing. Just plop some coffee on it, threw it in the oven. It makes this kind of crinkly noise. It gives it some texture ruled note paper. So I did a stack of these papers and pages that I can use um, to decorate my journal. And I can still use them and write on them and put them in, but it adds some texture and um, you know, this kind of thing, right? I also had some paper bags. These were white ones, just paper lunch sacks. And you can actually fold these and put them in your journal and it gives you pockets to add journal tags. Plus you can write on the bag and it gives you places where you can tuck things inside. So lots of really great ideas. Old dictionary pages. I went right to town and spent a day just copy dyeing and drawing it. And I had a lot of fun with that. Um, so that's pretty much it for my crafty stuff. 
Um, like I said, no knitting, no crochet. I will be getting back into that now that the temperatures are starting to get a little bit cooler. Although September month for us has been really lovely other than the hurricane we had. Um, we've had, we had one that came through. We didn't get any real damage. I lost some branches off of our trees. My huge maple in the backyard lost a massive branch. Hubby had to get up with a chainsaw and remove that. I mean, the branch was, the branch itself was quite big around. Um, it had come down across the top of our uh, front of our garden shed and was into our neighbor's yard. So he had to saw that up. So we have lots of wood now for um, the fire pit in the backyard. <laughs> Uh, but September has been a, a, a nice month, so I'm slowly getting back into walking now that my physiotherapy has been really helping with my back, and I've been out for a couple of walks this week. I'm hoping to go for another one today. Thank you so much for following um, and sticking with my channel and for coming back and visiting with me. If you have any questions about anything I discussed today, Pop them in the um, comment section and I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. Thank you very much. I hope everyone had a fabulous summer. I hope everyone's settling in back to some sort of routine and normalcy for the month um, into the fall. And yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again on the weekend with a new episode of Coffee, Crime, and Crafts. I also have a link to my Instagram. Feel free to check that out. I do post daily updates on there.